Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have a podcast team member on our show. She has her own podcast, and very soon, she is launching her own personal podcast on her channel. So you have to keep watch out for it, and she's going to tell you about it later on so you can write it down and keep an eye out for it. So today we have Coach Shauna Lee Simon, and she is a coach that focuses on helping women empower themselves. She teaches women different strategies because in the working world, it can get very gruesome, it can get very challenging, and it can be very stressful. So today she's going to hit a few topics to help women empower themselves and get through the business world in a fashion that is more healthy and with the mind, the body, and the spirit. And she's going to teach you some great things today. So, Shauna, take it away and tell everybody a little about yourself and what you're going to be talking about today. Thank you so much, Stacey. And I'm so thrilled to be back. Uh, we had such a great time the last time I was on the show. And so I thank you for for giving a voice to some of the things that I talk about. Um, yeah, one of the biggest things for me is just, you know, I watch so many women, especially entrepreneurs, just killing themselves to make a dime, basically. And, you know, we talk so much about the hustle of being a business owner and being an entrepreneur and there, there's an enjoyment about it. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's some, there's some thrill to the hustle, uh, but we can't be all hustle all the time or we'll end up burning ourselves out, which is exactly what I did back in 2017. I spoke about on the last show, took me three years to recover. And so through that though, I was able to develop some strategies for balancing work and life in a much more manageable way. And you know what? It's pretty incredible every day I practice the tools, whether I need them or not. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I had myself overbooked. I had four speaking engagements in one week (laughs) and uh, three of them required fresh PowerPoints, which was, you know, a process in itself. Yeah. And it should have killed me. (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, so the, the week before that this happened or a couple of weeks before this, I, I see this on my calendar. I was like, whoopsies, like as good as I am about, you know, certain rules when it comes to my productivity and maintaining my boundaries. Every once in a while, I find myself overbooked as well. And I'm looking at my calendar and thinking like, whoops, well, that happened. Yeah. So how am I going to navigate this? And will I have any sort of semblance of life? Am I going to just be killing myself? Will I be exhausted at the end of this? Yeah. And instead... I was able to put those strategies to work to be able to balance everything. I saw my friends and family still. I had family in from out of town. Uh, I was doing plenty of social things and really enjoying life. I still prioritized my health, my fitness, was still eating well, uh, still going to bed at a reasonable time. Did I work a few extra hours that week? Of course I did, but Mm -hmm. overall it was well balanced. And I actually, you know, one day I took the afternoon off, spent a couple of hours just relaxing and came back to things in the evening. So it was nice to know that no matter how busy I am, I am still practicing those tools. So we can hustle and there's nothing wrong with, with being a hustler and having that, that grit and that drive and that motivation to just keep going, no matter what's thrown at you. Yeah. But we also have to know when to take that step back and reflect on our own personal needs and listen to our body when it's telling us that it needs something. Cause it seems like we listen to everybody else and what they need and yeah. ignore what our, what our own selves are telling us, unfortunately. I notice a lot of times, you know, when I do listen to my body and I do listen to my my heart and my inner instincts and it says, okay, you've had enough, you know, I feel much more better as a person at whole. I don't feel as burnt out, but there are so mm-hmm. many times where I just try to push myself a little bit more. It's like, oh, if I just get this done, if I just get this done, but then I feel the regret at the end of the day, I realize yeah. that I pushed myself too much and, you know, and then I get mad at myself because I feel like, you know, a lot of times I don't get to do everything I wanted to do for me, that self-care. And yeah. I think- You know, a lot of people lack that, you know, because you're so involved with becoming an entrepreneur and trying to be that successful entrepreneur. Yeah. And I think there's almost a guilt or shame attached to not doing more. So if our body is saying to us like, hey, you got to quit for a little bit here or just take the evening off or take the day off or the weekend off or the afternoon off or whatever, you know, we, we, we hear it, but we push it aside because we feel guilty somehow doing that. And again, women, especially 
um, we tend to feel like we have to say yes to things more often than we probably should. And with that, we end up in a state that is more difficult to come back from. And I think we talked about this on the last episode that yeah. one of the scariest things about burnout is it's one of those things that you don't realize how close you are to burning out until you're right on the edge of it or you've already burnt out. Right. So being mindful on a daily practice and constantly checking in with yourself to ensure that you are not overloading yourself is so key to avoiding that burnout and that stress and that overwhelm. And I think one of the things that would probably be really good for us to talk about today is uh, what does it look like? Because <laughs> I think yeah. that's the other thing is that uh, I had this conversation, I've got a new coaching client that I'm in the process of onboarding. And when we spoke in her coaching assessment call, I identified that I believe that she is experiencing burnout. And I also believe that she's experiencing a level of depression right. and that shocked her. But when she took a moment to reflect, she realized that I was absolutely right. And of course, I am not a psychotherapist by any means. It, you know, yeah. there are certain things that I I can work with you as a business coach on your mindset, on your motivation, on your business goals. Uh, but if you are suffering from any sort of clinical depression or anything, I, I definitely recommend bringing in other experts and, and doctors as well for that. Um, but in this case, it was just more getting her to recognize that that was even something that she should be paying attention to. And she was looking at, she said, well, no, I've known people who are depressed and I, I'm not depressed. You know, like this person, they were depressed and, you know, they were, they were in this dark hole and this is what that looked like. And I think, uh, you know, when we are burning out, there is a level of depression that comes with it and mm -hmm. it's depression and burnout. They're not contests as in like, yeah. it doesn't matter where you are on the scale. <laughs> you're, you're all, you're all equal. If you're on the scale, yeah. you're, you're there, you know? So, um, so even just recognizing what burnout looks and feels like, I think that's something, um, that'd be helpful to discuss as well. Have you, have you ever experienced burnout yourself, Stacey? I have, you know, I've, I've experienced it more than once. And I, I feel like, you know, the, the last time I experienced burnout, I, I did, I think, feel, go through a depression. It didn't take, it didn't take much to get me off you know, past the iceberg, you know, so sure. to speak, you know, I was, you know, I was doing so much more than what I could handle. And then, you know, it was the littlest thing. And and I started to just like, fall, well, like just feel depressed. And it was like, you know, it was just a feeling of sadness and I couldn't really pin exactly, you know, the point. But then when I started to really go into my inner self, you know, I think it's the lack of appreciation, the lack of you trying to do so much for so many people. And sometimes people don't recognize or appreciate what you're trying to do. And mm -hmm. it's like, you get frustrated. So there you, you're feeling burnt out from all your work. And then you're feeling also maybe a lack of appreciation from others. And I think, you know, the combination of two, kind of brought me into that mode of depression like why am i doing this you know you know what's the point and and you know trying to figure out you know what the next step is and how do i get myself out of this you mentioned two things in that well lots of things of course that were mm -hmm. super valuable but there's two things that i want to circle back to the first thing is when you said it was the littlest thing and i think this is this is a clear sign of burnout if you are finding that something that shouldn't bother you is bothering you. Something that feels insignificant is pushing you over the edge. That is a clear sign of burnout. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that if you do that once in a blue moon that you're clearly burning out. But if you're finding that you're more easily set off by things that shouldn't bother you as much or things that didn't used to bother you are now bothering you, that is a one of the one of the symptoms and signs that you may be experiencing burnout and or depression. Right. And um, and as you said, like it's it's something that, you know, it seems so insignificant, like, oh, I, I shouldn't be bothered by this. I, I yeah. shouldn't care about this, but but I do. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned, which is also a great indicator of potential burnout, is talking about that lack of appreciation. And that lack of appreciation can be real or manufactured. And right. that's the other thing. So if you are feeling underappreciated, it's possible you are underappreciated. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. As women, we often are, <laughs> to be perfectly <laughs> frank. But it could also be if, if you're kind of looking around and feeling like everybody's against you, everybody's got an issue, 
everyone's annoying you, when you start feeling like it's all so big and what's happened to the entire world, when you start questioning things like that, yeah, that's when it, it it's time to take some, some introspective of, is this an external problem yeah. or an internal challenge? And it's not to say that everyone is innocent in this, that they aren't causing some challenges, of course. But mm -hmm. when we start looking at when it seems like everyone else is, and I hate using this term, but uh, let's say we're like, everyone is just stupid today. Everyone is just dumb today. Everyone is just annoying me today. Right. It might not be them that's annoying you so much as it could be you don't have the capacity that right. is a sign of burnout. Yes. Um, that inability to get out of bed in the morning where you feel like I normally jump out of bed when my alarm goes off or I can normally easily wake up at X time. Uh, yeah. If you're not able to do that as easily, that's a sign of burnout. The lack of desire to see friends and socialize is a sign of burnout. Right. Uh, eating habits changing to maybe more comfort foods than you normally eat. Mm -hmm is a sign of burnout. There's so many different ways that it presents and it sort of depends on how you naturally handle anxiety and stress. You'll yeah. tend to go to those coping mechanisms. And when you're finding that that's becoming a pretty common thing, chances are that you are either on the verge of or are already experiencing burnout. I feel like also like, you know, it's very hard for women to say no sometimes. I feel like we were mentioning this earlier, you know, it's like, you know, you feel like, you know, you, especially when you're working with a man, you know, you want to try to meet up because there's so much stigma in our society where mm -hmm. we had to fight to be where we are today. And we still feel under, you know, you know, a lot of times women, you know, you'll see a lot of women, we bond together because in the working world, you know, women were, you know, looked down on for so many years. And, mm -hmm. you know, so now, you know, we try to keep to that, try to keep that high level. And when we try to keep it that high level, sometimes that word no is, is in the back of our heads and we're trying to say, yes, 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 yes. You know, I could do it. I could do it. You know, great opportunity. I could do it, you know, and I've seen mm -hmm. myself do that many times. And then you find, you find yourself overwhelmed because you're doing too much. And, yeah. and then, you know, I think that's when also burnout comes in, but when do you, you know, how do you know when to say no? And how do you create those standards for yourself? Those, those, those standards where you okay, okay, you know, this is my goal. This is who I am. You know, these are going to be my standards and, you know, your yes and no standards, you know, and, and be able to decipher it when you're speaking with someone and, and really be able to say, you know what, this doesn't meet up to my standards. No, thank you. You know, that is a great question. And you actually already somewhat answered it. I mean, so first of all, yeah, you're absolutely right. Women, especially we're we're afraid to say no because it's sort of been built into the societal culture that we're supposed to be accommodating. And we're afraid that people are not going to like us or they're going to label us as being difficult if we say no to things. One of the things that I like to practice is what I call yes opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that is what can I say yes to comfortably without saying yes to maybe the full request? Maybe there's a modified version. Yeah. For example, I uh, had someone reach out and they wanted to hop on a call so they could pick my brain. Those are always fun things, right? They yeah. want to pick my brain on some things for a product that they're launching. And the, the reality is that, yeah, I've got some insights that I can probably provide to that product, but setting up a call requires not only the time of the call and the time of the call is often this indefinite amount of time. You might set it for 20 minutes. It ends up going 40. Yeah. You've got to put it on the calendar. So it disrupts your workflow because you have to stop whatever you're doing at whatever specific time that's at. And so looking at this, I'm thinking, you know, yeah, they're saying they only want, you know, 10 to 20 minutes from me, but the reality is I'm probably gonna have to like plan for an hour of my time. And I just don't have a whole lot of hours to give this month. This is a bit of yeah. a more hectic month for me because of the launch of my own podcast, of course, mm -hmm. among some other things. And so what my yes opportunity was, is I said, can you do a screen share video of what it is that you're looking to put out there? And yeah. I can then respond with an audio file, Excellent. giving you my thoughts. So now it's not going to be as disruptive. I can do it on my terms, on my schedule, and we can do some back and forth. It's going to be even more valuable to them because now they have this feedback that's 
very clear. That's in a recorded format anyway. So that's how I was able to say yes to something and still feel like I'm providing value without compromising my own boundaries. Right. And so where you sort of answered your own question on this was uh, it's in your goals. I actually have a webinar that uh, the the link that we're going to give out at the end of the show will give people um, access to that webinar. If they go to that page, they can see uh, they can sign up for access to it. It's called Stop Dreaming, Start Doing. Mm -hmm. And in that we talk about uh, or I talk about once you get clear on what your goals are, you use that as a roadmap, essentially. So mm -hmm. if an opportunity comes up, and let's say it aligns with one of your goals that's on your five-year plan. Mm -hmm. Saying yes to it now could compromise your short-term goals. So you need to evaluate what it looks like to say yes and what it looks like to say no. How does this get me closer to my short-term goals? And right. if it's not getting me closer to my short-term goals, what is it costing me to do it? Time, money, resources, whatever. So for example, there might be a service. So you're, most of my clients uh, operate businesses where they provide services. So let's say right. they offer a service and someone approaches them and they want to introduce another service in a few years, not right now, but in a few years. And some someone comes up and says they want that service that they're planning on offering in a few years. Okay, so to bump up that timeline and offer it now, do you have the infrastructure to even support it? What right. do you have to create behind the scenes in order to be able to offer this service now? So let's say it's going to take them 20 hours just to create the various templates and spreadsheets and whatever else they need for tools and resources to get this yeah. set up. Mm -hmm. So it might not cost you actual money, but that just took 20 hours of your time. How could that 20 hours have been spent bringing you closer to your short-term goals? Right. So while this may seem like a great opportunity because I want to do that someday, yeah. If you're not prepared to be able to give it your all now, saying right. yes to that could actually be more detrimental. And so that's how we end up not meeting the goals that we intend to meet, how, how we end up not seeing the profitability that we want to see. And, and let me be clear, I am guilty of this as well. Mm -hmm. There are, I'm constantly reevaluating the things that I say yes to, but I've got sort of an internal structure that I use of guidelines of in order to say yes, does it meet this criteria? Right. And if it doesn't, so, and what that criteria is, is going to vary for each person, but mm -hmm. it's something that I, I cover a little bit in this training, this free training that I was talking about that I have available. Right. Uh, I talk a little bit about how to evaluate those opportunities and how to get comfortable saying no, because right. again, we, we do need to prioritize ourselves. And I watch majority of the women that I work with are women who are incredibly talented. There's zero shortage of talent. Mm -hmm. They are so well-skilled and yet they're not profitable. They're not right. making the money that they should be making and they're busy. Yeah. They're constantly doing something. And so we constantly mistake busy for being productive. I read a stat recently that uh, on an average eight hour work day, we are only actually productive for approximately 40% of that time. Wow. I believe it. So if we're spending all of our time being busy, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're being productive. Right. So there is something to be said for, I'm not necessarily saying, you know, we, we can all work towards the four hour work week, of course, <laughs> but uh, you know, in, in a dream maybe, but uh, <laughs> even working for less hours each day can actually prove to be more productive. Right. So there's, there's a lot of things to be learned. Um, and if you can't necessarily work less hours in a day, taking breaks and significant breaks. Mm -hmm. So instead you know, taking those five minute breaks, but also taking those longer breaks. Um, right. It's really, really valuable. Yeah. But the more clear you are on what it is that you're working towards, the easier it is to know what to say yes to and what to say no to. And I think it's a crucial step that so many people skip when they're yeah. building their business. And I think part of it is that, you know, most business owners started that business because they're passionate about something. They found a problem that they can solve for someone else and enjoy doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, making money is sort of the side effect of that. But the challenge with looking at it that way is that we don't approach it with the same business sense yeah. that we probably should. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why the rich keep getting richer. Yes. You know, they're setting those goals and they're not letting anything get in their way. So right. why are we? Yeah. 
So what are, what are ways that people could actually set a trajectory and set, you know, and th- for a woman who, who have passions and they're entrepreneurs and they, you know, they have to really set their goals and be more constructive in the business world, because a lot of times, you know, people will have a great idea. They'll have that passion, but they'll lack that business sense. You know, they'll have that creativity. They'll have yeah. everything it needs to take to build a successful business for themselves but they lack some business sense because they haven't been really exposed to the business world and there, 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 there's holes that really need to be filled. What would be some steps that you think women should really, you know, focus on to make sure they have a solid foundation where they could build on? Yeah. I mean, the greatest thing about business skills is that they can totally be learned by anyone. Mm -hmm. Um, learn to outsource the things that you really, really suck at. So if you (laughs) just know you are not a digital marketer, don't try to become one. If you just know that you're not a great accountant, don't try to become one. But you should have a base knowledge of all of these things. So look at getting yourself some basic training for business skills. Uh, But to me, the first path to all of this is sitting down and actually writing down what it is that you're trying to accomplish. One of the things that I recommend doing is what I call a brain dump for all your goals and just everything. Because you know what? As entrepreneurs, we're so guilty of this. Mm -hmm. There are so many ideas floating around in our head. Yeah. It's sort of the curse. I remember someone posting a meme one day of something that said along the lines of imagine your browser with approximately 2,974 tabs open. That's what it looks like (laughs) inside my head. And it's so true. Like I am one of those people who has multiple windows with multiple tabs in my browser, literally on a daily basis, Never mind what's, what's going on in my head. So we have all these ideas and they're they kind of look almost like those Christmas lights all tangled up um, yeah. mm-hmm. or a big bowl of spaghetti where yeah. you can't really decipher one from another. Right. So the best thing that I recommend is honestly write them all down. And once they're on paper, you can get that visual. You really need that visual to be able to look at them and then identify which ones are the priority. You'll see that there are certain things. Well, I can't do this until this other one is done. Yeah. So obviously this other one has to be a higher priority. Right. And and sifting through it that way. And so I recommend setting essentially three phases of your goals and having those, and then send a timeline to them. And that timeline can be, like I have one of my clients, phase one was three months, phase two was six months, and phase three was two years. Right. But you might decide phase one is one year, phase two is two years. I don't recommend having the final phase more than three years. If you're finding that there's items on there that are going to take more than three years, those go into a whole separate list of a maybe someday kind of list as opposed to a, I'm going to work on it, work towards this. And that way you can get less distracted. So when you are evaluating those opportunities, taking a look at that list and saying, well, which one am I actually working towards? Right. And then creating that list is only the first step. The next step is creating the action steps to move you towards it. That takes a little bit more work. That's where some additional training might come in. Maybe it's, you know, getting a nice audio book on something, listening to a fantastic podcast episode that Mm -hmm. digs into it. Uh, it could also be working with an accountability partner or a business coach. Right. Um, you know, everyone's going to be different depending on what your goals are. I do believe, and this is an unbiased opinion, I promise, but I do believe everyone should have a business coach. I have yeah. built my career working with business coaches and, um, and of course I'm a business coach myself, but right. I wouldn't ever imagine not having one. Uh, yeah. we were talking earlier. I know you, you value this as well. Like it's something that. Um, you know, they, they help you to steer your ship in oh, the yeah. entrepreneurial world where you can feel very alone yeah. um, and it helps to give you that support that you need. So, um, and I also, when it comes to uh, business coaches, don't be afraid to move on from a business coach. If you feel that you've outgrown them too, that's something right. that uh, there are times where I'll be working with clients and just say, I'll say to them, you know what? I think we've come to the end of our time together. I think that right. someone who's got more of a focus on this specific area that you're heading in is going to serve you well. Let me see if I can make a recommendation for you. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you don't have to stay with the same business coach. In fact, I think it's going to work against you to stay with the same business coach for 10 plus years or whatever, you know, right. Uh, each one will give, give different value. So, um, yeah, yeah I think that getting the goals sorted out first and then being able to put the action steps behind it. That's kind of key. And I know I'm sort of simplifying it a little bit, but it's a, it's a start anyway. 
I think it's so important to like, you know, organize everything like you do. Like, you know, like I'll have different notebooks for different things where I'll, I'll mm. organize like um, in one notebook, I'll have all the different types of services that I offer and how I plan to build on them. And then I'll have like another notebook where I'll keep track of what I'm doing each day. That way I don't waste, you know, we talk about being productive and how we waste 60% of our time. Yeah. Let me see what I'm actually doing and where I need to actually focus my time on and what I'm wasting my time on. Because sometimes the day goes by so quick, but we don't realize exactly what we're doing and, and how much it's taken away from us, you know, and so oh, I'll, have, absolutely. Like, I'll do, I'll have different things and then I'll have my calendar and I'll, I'll organize everything in front of me. Cause I think it's hard sometimes because once you start to get a little successful, you start getting more and more things that you have to balance. And so it's, you know, I think that could be part of the burnout is just, you know, when you finally do start to grow and you get out of that, 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 uh, beginning surface or that plateau service, it's, um, then you start, it's like, you're like, Oh my God, Oh, I got all these things I got to do. You know, right? And you try to be super girl, you know, and it, yeah. it's, and you can't be super girl. So you have to figure out ways to actually balance the growth. Are there ways that you suggest that can balance, you know, your growth when you're trying to build into yourself into a successful entrepreneur? Yeah. Oh, that, that is such a, <laughs> that is a loaded question. Let me just tell you. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, having the goals and, and your priorities set straight, that's a big part of it. Uh, being able to identify what tasks are urgent and important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's sort of the four quadrants of what's, what's urgent versus not urgent, important versus not important. Those are your four yeah. quadrants. And if it's, if it lands in urgent and important, it does need to be taken care of. But if you look at that list and there's 20 items in that list, <laughs> it's just not realistic. Right. So you need to look at, you need to really, I, I call it tri triaging the task list. Yeah. So what is truly important and truly urgent and taking a look at Who's impacted? So if there's something where it's somebody else's imposed timeline, for example, is it something that maybe there's some flexibility where you can say, listen, I've got these other six projects I'm working on. I want to give this my, my all and my focus. Can we shift the timeline on it? Yeah. Um, there's other times where I'll take a look at my, my to-do list and there's, I've got some great ideas on there. There's some things that I really know I would enjoy that have value to them but maybe they just can't take up space right now. So it's right. just a matter of pushing them out. I love what you said about having your notebooks because that gives you that visual to be able to check back in on these items too and be able to say like, oh, I've done this. I haven't done that, you know? And then you, as you reevaluate, you might even find that there's things on there where you're like, you know what? This was a really good idea, but I've kind of fleshed it out a little bit in my yeah. thoughts in this notebook. And maybe it's not actually the direction that I want to go in. Maybe it was someone else had planted a seed and right. you kind of, played with it a little bit to see how it felt and maybe it doesn't quite feel right. So right. that gives you that opportunity. The other thing that the notebooks do though, too, is when you get that idea, you can just put it into the notebook as opposed to having to take action on it immediately. Right. And so that's a big thing that sometimes going back to that non-product, non-productive time, what's happened is we've been distracted. We get this idea and we just start going, getting sidetracked by it and running yeah. off on this tangent. Instead of running off on a tangent, what if you just created a task for a future date to revisit it and right. dump down all your ideas for it? So that's that triage that I'm talking about of just sort of pushing some things off and really evaluating what's important. And if there's things that are truly, they're all urgent, they're all important. Why do you have to be the one to do this? Yeah. And this is something I go through with my clients all the time. And it's amazing. Here's the thing. When you look at something and ask yourself, do I need to be the one to do it? Your immediate answer is most likely, yep, nobody else can do this. Right. And the reality is that there's not only can other people do it, they might even do it better than you can. Exactly. So allowing ourselves to take a beat and ask ourselves that again, because when mm -hmm. I do this to my coaching clients, if I say to them, you know, do you have to be the one to do that? Oh, yep. No, I have to do it. Okay. Why? Well, because of this, this, and this. Okay. Could someone else do it if we implemented a strategy right. and you know, maybe start throwing out some ideas? Well, no. Oh, but well, maybe. Okay. <laughs> so maybe they can't do exactly what I just suggested, but that gives them inspiration. Okay. Let me think about this further. I suppose right. if I was able to put this foundation down, they could potentially do it. 
Uh, you know, one of the biggest things that people say they can't outsource or they can't offload things because nobody else knows how to do it. Exactly. Okay. What would it take for you to train someone? Oh, too much time. Really? <laughs> or do you do it? I do every, all of my training. I don't do it live. I do it in video mm-hmm. for every team member. If I need to show them something, I put it into a video Right. and I send it to them and they love it. They can go back to it. They can review things. If they've got questions, they can ask them. Uh, but it is a much faster way to get things off my plate. Does that mean they're going to do it perfectly the first time? Not necessarily, but right. sometimes done is better than perfect. Exactly. You know, so uh, let's take some of that stress away from us. But I think setting some clear boundaries too of like, these are the hours that I work. These are the hours I don't work. These are the things that I do. These are the things that I don't do. Uh, and getting pretty clear on those. And sometimes like I have a list of things, like I said, I've got this algorithm, I like to call it, mm-hmm. of how I evaluate opportunities. I check in with it. I don't pretend that I've got it all memorized. I check in with it on a regular basis yeah. to make sure I'm really choosing the things that are aligned with where I want to go. Right. And if they don't align as difficult as it is to say no, I, I had a request come in yesterday and I don't want to say what the request actually is because the person might be listening to this and I, I don't want them to realize the, the right. internal turmoil of yeah, yeah. this, but you know, like it's, there is a, what I'm being asked to do. Can I do it? Yes. Should I do it? <sighs> Probably not. Yeah. And so that's where in, instead of saying yes, I'm evaluating what are some other solutions I might be able to present. Um, and in order to do that, I need to go back and ask some more questions of what their objectives are so that I can right best support them in a way that is authentic to me and to the things that I'm working towards right? instead of taking me away from that. When we start looking at time, the way that we look at our money, Mm -hmm. we're going to spend it differently. I agree. I agree totally. And I think, you know, one of the things is, is that some, it's really hard for sometimes people to say no. And I think that's the big downfall. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes, you know, I think people, you know, are afraid to, to, to say no to the person, you know, face to face or, you know, that's why people so many times text each other, you know, but you know, it, it's really important. I think the best communication is verbal communication, you know, Great. you know, and, uh, and I think a lot of times when you text and you, you try to things get lost and, and, and yeah. messages don't come across. Right. But I think a lot of people are afraid to approach other people and it's being able to really, I think, strengthen yourself, you know, and you, do you have any suggestions? Cause I think some, some women, you know, are really scared to either, either they're afraid to let them down or they're just afraid to say, no, I'm not really sure what the meaning, you know, what their, their insecurities mm-hmm. are behind it. But I find that saying no is is a very big problem for a a lot of women. Yeah. And I wish I had like a magical solution. The best thing that I can suggest though is first of all, lead with curiosity. This is something I speak about often is lead with curiosity. And what I mean by that is ask questions to understand what the, whatever the request is, understanding what their objectives are, and that will help you to evaluate whether or not it actually needs to be you that's helping them out. Mm -hmm. There are ways of saying no while sounding like you're still saying yes. So like I said, you know, can you come up with an alternative, even if that alternative is just saying, let me pass you along to so-and-so who's great at this kind of thing. And I think they would really be able to give it the attention that it deserves. Yes. And so when you're reframing your no, as I'm saying no, because it's best for you. If I say no, Mm -hmm. that can get us to feel more comfortable. That is not to say that we have to do that every time we're saying no, we don't have to appease everybody. Sometimes you can say no and just say, I'm saying no, because it doesn't align with what my current goals are right now. And I really need to make sure that I'm focused on the focusing on the tasks that are in alignment with that. So while I appreciate you considering me, what an honor, what an opportunity, uh, you know, really showing gratitude with your decline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would say, you know, like I'm going to decline this, but have immense gratitude there. Uh, right. you know, we're, I think that women, especially, we just have this sort of altruistic type of nature to us that, you know, so many women that I work with, whatever it is that they're doing, whatever field they're in, they got into it because they were passionate about it. Yeah. And so I often hear, I love this so much. I would do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
but at the end of the day that, you know, goodwill doesn't pay bills. Exactly. And so, you know, we do have some needs there and we do need to prioritize that. So um, you can say yes, but be more strategic about it. So here's a, a great example. Um, how many requests do you get for different charities? Right. Right. So pick one or two charities that you support and say no to everything else. Exactly. You know, it's, and just when you, when someone asks you to contribute to something else, just say, you know what, I really appreciate you asking my commitment goes mm -hmm. to this charity or that charity. Uh, and, and what, what I do is I have two main charities that I contribute to on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. And then I have what I call a little slush fund of smaller contributions that I can make to other charities. So if someone is selling raffle tickets, for example, yep, I will buy your $10 raffle tickets to support your cause. Right. Or I'll spend 20 bucks over there for supporting an event that's coming up. I'll buy a ticket for it or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do the major sponsorship or the big mm -hmm. asks. Like we yeah. were asked recently by a phenomenal foundation um, if we would provide a room design like makeover for someone mm -hmm. and we wouldn't have received any recognition for it. Now, uh, first of all, when I donate to the charities that I donate to, I don't look for any recognition, mm -hmm. but if I'm going to be giving time, resources and money right. to a cause that is not one of those ones specifically, there needs to be a, recipro a reciprocity to that. Yes. And if I there agree. can't be, and in this case, there can't be, they, there is not an option for them due to privacy. They cannot promote it. And so we've said, you know, we appreciate that, but we're going to have to pass. Yeah. You know, and so setting out kind of what the, what would it take for you to say yes, mm -hmm. would make it easier for you to say no. I'd love like to that. say yes, but here's what I would need in order to say yes. You know, and is there something that they can do? So Sometimes it makes it worthwhile. Um, I think each person it, it it takes practice. It takes it takes constant practice. It's something yeah. that it doesn't come overnight. And like I said, I still catch myself saying yes to things where I'm like, oh shoot, probably shouldn't have said yes to that. Yeah. And once you're committed, it's hard to back out of something um, comfortably. But um, set those set some boundaries and set some rules up for yourself of what you will and will not do. And what is it you're working towards? And that makes it a lot easier checking in with that and checking in with yourself regularly to make sure that you're, you're prioritizing that. I agree a hundred percent with you. And I think also, I, do, do you ever feel like sometimes women are nice and sometimes be, their niceness, people would take advantage, you know, it seems like women try to do the right thing. It is, you know, they have, you know, because especially if the business is their passion, they want, mm -hmm. they're, they're doing it because they love it and they want to help people. And then sometimes I will see in a lot of clients, I will see people will take advantage of those people. And sadly, you know, um, you know, they eventually catch on, but it, mm -hmm. it, it, it really upsets them, but it, it's, it's so common, you know, that other people, you know, how do you handle that? And how do you catch on? Are there signs people should look for? Or, and, 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 you know, and how do they set those boundaries? You know, even though they are a nice person and they're compassionate in what they do, they have to be stern and they have to be a business person. And I always feel like, you know, as, as, as nice as we are, you have to set your relationship, you know, and, and your business life in two different categories. And some people, they, they take their love and their compassion for their, their cause and they mix it with their business. And I think maybe that might be where the problem comes in. What do you feel like? Yeah. And you know what? I have so many mixed thoughts on that, to be honest, because there's definitely, you know, personally, not necessarily professionally, I've had some people take, um, I don't want to say take advantage, but um, not come through in the way that I would have hoped for some, right. some things that I've done. But Again, it was not so much that I did those things with the with an expectation attached to them, mm -hmm. and just because that one person didn't appreciate something the way that I would have felt it merited, doesn't mean the yeah. next person won't. So I don't want right. to discourage people yeah. from leading with some kindness, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think that the, my best advice for that is have clear policies yes. on what you do, how your services are offered. So things like payment terms and um, limitations to your mm -hmm. services, things like that. And that way, if someone is requesting something 
that takes you outside of that, it's a more conscious decision that you have to make. And if you express to the person, I think where we often get caught is we're being kind, but no one but us knows that we're being kind. Yeah. So for example, um, I had one of a service company that I hired, Mm -hmm. um, told me they had to raise the price by a pretty significant amount. And I said, well, that's a pretty steep raise. They said, well, actually we've raised all of our other clients, but we held you the same for the last few years. So now we need to get you caught up to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I didn't know I was being held at this other price. Yeah. I probably would have been a lot more grateful for it. I probably would have appreciated the value of it more if I had known about it. And instead they're festering in some resentment that I'm not paying them what they feel they're worth. Right. They never asked me to. So, um, you know, when we have those policies in place, if we're going to be kind, we have to make sure that people know when things are an exception to the rule. Yeah. Yeah. That helps to avoid being taken advantage of a little bit. It's not to say that there's still going to be people out there, of course, that will push things to the limits. But if yes. you're explaining to them, like, I, you know, I'm bending my rules for you. So when they ask for the next favor, you can say, you know, I've already bent my rules as far as I can possibly bend them for you. Right. And always justifying why you're doing it. So if you are going to be extra kind and make an exception, tell them why. Yeah, And that why can't just be, you're really nice. So I'm going to do this for you. It can be, you know, I see you're in a a tough financial spot. I don't normally do this. Here's what I can do for you though. Uh, You know, and make that true exception, but ask for something in return still. Like, can I get a testimonial from you? Can I, um, can I call on you next year when I have this other event that I need some support with, you know, yes, getting some skin in the game for them. So we can still be kind, but set boundaries around it. Right. Again, it's sort of one of those muscles we need to constantly flex to be able to get more yeah. uh, strength in it. We do need to be practicing it regularly, not mm-hmm. just once in a while, because it it does get a lot easier. So pretty much every day, right? If you're, for me, it's you know my my mom and dad live local to me now, and this is a fairly new thing for us. And um, there, I say yes to almost everything they ask me to do. But that's why I'm also comfortable saying no to the things that every once in a while, I'm like, you know what? I don't think I can swing that. I've got a really busy weekend or I've got a really busy week or can we adjust this, you know? And because I'm saying yes to so much, it's easy for me to say no to certain things. But I have to remind myself that it's okay for me to say no to things just because I moved them to my city so I can help them out doesn't mean that I have to do everything. Right. And every once in a while, my mom's like, well, can I do that? I'm like, oh. You know what? You can. Maybe I don't need to be the one doing this. Maybe, maybe you're perfectly capable of doing this yourself with a little guidance. You know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a muscle that constantly needs to be worked out, just like anything else. Yeah. Now you said when it came to burnout, you do exercises each day, like different things that you automatically do to help you, yeah. so you don't get into that burnout mode. What do you do to help you with that's with that oh I I love this um so and I, I do want to preface this by saying that. For every person, it's going to be different. Of course, Mm -hmm. you have to find what works best for you. Um, But yeah, I practice burnout prevention, stress management on a daily basis. So for example, if you're feeling stressed, you'll often be told, go for a walk to clear your head, which is a great suggestion. But why do you have to wait until you're stressed to go for a walk? Mm -hmm. So I go for a walk pretty frequently. I may not go get out for a walk every day. And I'll admit the days I don't get out for a walk, I... I don't, I, I, I feel a little bit more upset that I didn't get for that walk. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it reminds me the next day, I better go for that walk. Um, so that's one of the things that I do is movement. So I exercise five days a week, but my walks are not for exercise. My walks are strictly for movement and getting right. that fresh air. Uh, you know, maybe you, you can't go for a walk, but maybe you just need to step outside and breathe in some of that outdoor air. Yeah. Um, maybe you're not an outdoor air kind of person. Maybe you need inside you need to uh, burn some essential oils. Maybe right. it's about taking a bath. Uh, maybe it's a hot cup of tea. I do an afternoon tea every day. It's such a great mental reset for yes. me. Mm-hmm. Um, you may start your day with some positive affirmations or meditation. Maybe you end your day with journaling, which is mm-hmm. great for getting those thoughts out that are yeah. lingering. If you have a hard time falling asleep, journal. Yeah. Get those thoughts out. Right. Uh, maybe it's about having dedicated time without screen time. 
Um, maybe it's getting lost in a show. Maybe there's, you know, a particular show that you enjoy watching or getting lost in a book. Yeah. So I think it, it looks different for everyone, how they're going to do it. But, um, one of the key things that I recommend is invoking the five senses. So making sure that, so if you're feeling stressed or if you're not feeling stressed, making sure that you are calling on all of your senses, your yes. sense of touch, which can be a cozy blanket. It can be snuggling with a pet. Um, it can be hugging your, your partner, um, you know, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe it's just holding something warm, like a cup of tea right. and evoking your, your taste, your smell, you know, all of those, uh, you know, help to what, what sort of relaxing factors can they bring in? So I love the smell of lavender. Um, I think we might've talked about this last time, the shower bombs. I love my shower yeah. bombs. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so really figuring out, you know, if you are feeling stressed, what are, what are some ways that you can evoke all five of your senses? Right. And then practice that when you're not stressed. It doesn't mean you have to do every one every day. Exactly. We should be doing something every day for a healthy mindset for resetting yourself and your right. mind and your motivation and um, your, yourself both physically and mentally. If we're not practicing that daily, and taking the breaks that we need when we need to walking away from stressful situations as needed. Yes. Uh, you will find yourself burning out very quickly. Right. And sometimes you don't see it coming. No, but mm -hmm. it does manifest physically and your, your body's immune system is compromised and yes. you can find yourself in some serious health conditions. And the older we get <laughs> the more mindful, we need to be. So practicing yes. that mindfulness every day is really key. Yeah, yeah, because I, you know, I always say it in so many of my shows, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. You know, it just breaks down the oh, walls yeah. of the immune system. And we're basically saying, come on, illness, welcome, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And I mean, science backs this up. This is not something that is just, um, you know, like a voodoo science kind of thing. Like, no, no, there's, there's actual data. Um, yeah. I wish I had like a, an actual study that I could cite right now, but there, there, I promise there is scientific data to back this up. Oh, there is. Doctors yeah. will tell you. Yes. Like, I mean, if you have a heart attack, what's the first thing they tell you? Well, you need to try to take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't get too stressed. Oh, interesting. You know? So, um, exactly. and I think the thing is that despite our best, um, intentions and our best practices, you can't avoid stress. No. Stress will find you. Yes. So if you are practicing stress management on a daily basis, it becomes muscle memory. So when you really need to call on it, you can. Yes. I went through a pretty stressful situation last summer, somewhat unexpectedly. And, you know, I wasn't prepared for it. But each day I was pretty impressed at how well I was navigating it. It didn't mean yeah. that I didn't still have big emotions about it. Right. And But I allowed myself those emotions while also not letting it completely derail me right? and found, you know, using the anxiety coping and stress management coping mechanisms that I had and calling on those tools yeah. really helped put me back into a good place. I definitely find in my most stressful situations for me, finding a good audio book or podcast that right. relates to what I'm feeling, whatever you're feeling, I can promise you someone out there has written about or talked about it. <laughs> yes, 100%, 100%. And sometimes just listening to, it's sometimes only, almost just the validation. You don't necessarily need any tools or steps to take, but just that validation of it can just feel really yes. rewarding. So I find that it's really helpful for me as well. Yeah. yeah, I find that also. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you had to summarize mm -hmm. it, what takeaways would you like to like express to the audience? How would you like to, um, you know, things that you would like to emphasize to the listeners, you know, to make important factors that they could really benefit from? I would say it's the power of no. Saying no is one of the greatest power moves that you can make. And I don't mean a power move in a sense where you have a superior superiority over someone else, but it's right. a power move in terms of moving yourself forward yeah. in the right direction saying no is often more powerful than saying yes. You still, you've got to say yes. Don't get me wrong. You got to say yes to opportunities mm -hmm. or you're not going to move forward, but saying yes to the right opportunities. So getting really, really crystal clear on the company that you're building, the personal and professional objectives that you have, the goals that you have, yeah. getting crystal clear on that will help to create a map for you of where you're going yeah. so that you can see if things are going to make sense. I mean, think about any time you go on a road trip, 
you have your destination in mind, but you know, you're going to hit some things along the way yeah. and some are going to take you further off course than the others. We well, got to weigh those things out. If this is going to take me, you know, 50 miles off course, it's right. got to be worth it to do it, you know? So like exactly. the grand canyon might make sense, but going to check out these pies in this little store that may be the best pies ever, but maybe is not enough of a reason to take me off course, you know? So yes. um, I think that we got to practice the same thing in life as, you know, imagine that you're on a road trip and decide what, how far off course you're going to allow yourself to go on a regular basis. And um, just being super, super mindful and really checking in with yourself, but saying no, get comfortable saying no, learn how to say no, practice it. Your kids will love you for it. I promise. <laughs> They'll love you for it. See, I'm practicing saying no right now. It's going to yeah. go great. I promise. <laughs> so you see the Shauna Lynn girl that I was taught that I heard on this podcast, she told me I needed to practice saying no. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, where can people find you? Yeah. So they can find me at about And I've actually got uh, a great page that they can check out forward slash the advisor. So about forward slash the advisor. And I've got some great resources on it that I talked about in the show today. And of course, as you mentioned, I do have my own podcast coming out very soon. So it will be coming out to about forward slash podcast. In the meantime, I've got some great resources on there and you can sign up to be notified of episode releases as well. So check it out. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. and, and have you decided on the name of the show? Or I have. Yes. It is the real women, real business podcast. Oh, I like that. I yeah. like that. Yeah. So it's, it aligns really well with the group coaching program that I have, which is the real women, real business mastery program. It's a 12 month group coaching program. I won't get into all the details here. Check it out on my website, but uh, the real women, real business podcast is going to be an extension of that. And it's going to be focusing on the success pillars that we need in order to achieve our full personal professional success. But um, it's about really celebrating all women. Women come in a variety of shapes and forms and identities, and this celebrates all women for the power that they hold. And, um, you know, real women do real business. And that's what I, what I really want to bring to the table. So I'll have lots of guests on there. Lots of powerful women that will be joining me and sharing their success tips as well. I love it. Oh, this is very yeah. exciting. And Thank when you. when is the show, do you think it will start to air? Do you have an idea yet or it's still yep. up in the air? I am aiming for April 2nd. Oh, so good. that is that is my goals for April 2nd. Um, I might release a sneak peek a little bit earlier. We'll see. <laughs> uh, but April 2nd is the date that I have for the official drop. So yeah, I'm oh, really excited exciting. about it. It's going to be focused on, like I said, the, the success pillars, but achieving them without burning out as well, without that overwhelm, without that stress, giving us the tools that we need to navigate the daily challenges of entrepreneurship as a woman uh, yes. without getting overwhelmed by it. Yeah. I love that. And that's so important. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Shona, for coming, coming on the you. show. I love, I loved everything you had to say. You had such great advice and this is something that's so prevalent in our society, you know, with women entrepreneurs. So thank you so much for sharing today. I, thank you I for having it. me, Stacey. My pleasure. Always. I always enjoy our chats. Yes, me too. Me too. All right. I'll see you soon. Sounds great. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.